Amy, are you okay? Do you feel unwell? Even though I knew I couldn't expect a response from my baby, I kept voicing my concerns out of worry. I somehow felt that something was different from her usual self. Furthermore, every time she took a deep breath, her breathing seemed shallow and she appeared somewhat heavy. Then, my mother-in-law, who had noticed this situation, spoke up. Isn't it a good thing that she's quiet? She's always crying and noisy. So let her sleep for a bit. My mother-in-law's somewhat sarcastic voice only heightened my anxiety. Prioritizing Amy's safety. I decided to ignore my mother-in-law's words and immediately took her to the hospital. My name is Hannah. I'm 28 years old and work in an administrative role at a food company. Three years ago, through an acquaintance, I met Tim and we dated for a year. And he proposed sweetly, leading us to marriage. The happiness at that time was indescribable. However, deciding to live with my mother-in-law after marriage turned out to be a great regret. Hannah, is dinner not ready yet? You're a bit slow, aren't you? Maybe your brain is also slow? Among all the people I've met, my mother-in-law had the most challenging choice of words and often used harsh language. I've been hurt by her words many times. But amidst such life, a moment of great joy arrived. The birth of our lovely daughter, Amy. But shortly after her birth, something unexpected happened. Amy was a very lively girl and she drank a lot of milk. But her intense crying at night was quite challenging for both of us as parents. No matter how much we tried to soothe her, once she started crying, it took a long time to calm her down. I consulted with several friends trying to find a solution. Many said that they drive their babies at night to help them sleep. From their stories, it seems that the movement and sound of the car help the baby feel secure and they fall asleep quickly. It might remind babies of the sensation when they were inside their mother's womb. I also remembered seeing similar stories on social media, and I recalled falling asleep in the car when I was young. So, the idea of nighttime drives came to my mind. However, the problem was that I didn't have a driver's license. My husband had one, but he worked from early morning to late night and was very tired at the end of the day. Waking him up in the middle of the night to drive a crying baby wasn't realistically feasible. He needed his rest and I had to consider his work the next day. While I was intrigued by the idea of nighttime drives, it wasn't a feasible solution due to our circumstances. With no solution in sight, my mother-in-law became another reason for my stress. Can you keep her quiet? She's too noisy. Unable to bear the crying at night, my irritated mother-in-law would shout at us. Additionally, she held old-fashioned beliefs that the family heir should be a male, which further tested our marriage. Every day, I regretted living with her and struggled with the decision. Thankfully, my husband was very supportive in childcare. He took three weeks of paternity leave after the birth, which was a blessing. He was supposed to take longer, but due to work commitments, he had to return earlier than expected. I honestly wished he could stay longer, but I understood his work pressures. And so, our new life began. Just as he returned to work, our daughter's nighttime crying started. Anyone would get a bit irritated if a fussy baby cried beside them when they're tired. My husband seemed quite strained by the crying when he came home exhausted from work. He never complained directly, but I could feel his fatigue every time he tossed and turned in bed. I was honestly feeling dizzy from the daily sleep deprivation and pressure from my mother-in-law. One day in the afternoon, my mother-in-law flaunted a bag of medicine to me. Look, Hannah, because of the baby's crying at night, I couldn't sleep and got this medicine. It's really tough, she said. Then, deliberately in front of me, she took the medicine, remarked sarcastically, such an inconvenience, and went back to her room. Watching her leave, I felt like crying a little. On one particular night, my husband had an important presentation the next day. I wish I could let him get a good night's sleep tonight, I thought, so I had been taking care of our daughter all day, thinking of various things. I adjusted her nap time, played with her more than usual, and read books to her. By nighttime, perhaps due to my efforts, she slept soundly. 
I felt a deep sense of accomplishment. I thought, tonight, I can let my husband dress well, and I might finally get some sleep. Just then, my mother-in-law suddenly banged on our room door. Hannah, you haven't washed the dishes yet. What are you thinking, leaving them this late? She shouted angrily. By prioritizing putting our daughter to bed, I had put off washing the dishes. I deeply regretted not explaining that to my mother-in-law. And then, woken by my mother-in-law's shouting, our daughter Amy began to cry loudly. All my day's efforts evaporated with a single sentence from my mother-in-law, and I felt like crying, too. Despite this, hearing Amy's cries, my mother-in-law shouted even more? Why is it always so noisy every night? Can't you keep it quiet? Feeling that my sanity might shatter, I began preparing milk for Amy. It had been some time since her last feed. Returning to Amy, I found my husband holding her. Amy was quiet in my husband's arms, but she looked like she might cry again soon. As I brought the bottle close, she began drinking eagerly. She must have been hungry, I thought. This was the first time my husband and I had fed Amy together in the middle of the night, and it felt like a very special moment. Seeing my husband feed Amy, I strongly believed we could get through these nighttime challenges together. This joint effort felt very warm, a moment filled with love. Our hearts swelled with the thought of lovingly raising this small life. The next morning, after my husband left for work, I started doing house chores. During this time, my mother-in-law was relaxing on the sofa. She wouldn't help, but frequently offered unsolicited advice and comments. Then, I noticed something. Amy, who usually laughed and waved her arms and legs to get my attention, was unusually quiet today. Her eyes were half open, and she seemed distant. Are you okay? I asked, filled with concern. Usually cheerful and easily amused, Amy seemed different today. I was also worried about her breathing, which seemed a bit shallow, and her body felt cooler than usual. At that moment, my mother-in-law, laughing, said, isn't it good that she's quiet? She's always so noisy. Let her sleep a bit. But my anxiety only grew. Uncertain of what to do, with sweaty palms, I dialed pediatric emergency for the first time. They advised, please visit a pediatrician immediately. Without delay, I rushed to a nearby hospital. When called into the consultation room, an elderly doctor in a white coat awaited us. Just seeing his face brought a sense of relief. After examining Amy, the doctor spoke to us with a grave expression. It seems your daughter was in a very critical condition. However, she's stable now, so there's no need to worry. Hearing his calm voice, I felt relieved. But then, his next words made my heart race. As a result of the examination, specific drug components were found in your daughter's body. This is from a medicine commonly prescribed for insomnia. Are you aware of this? His eyes were sharp, piercing through me. I was completely taken aback and couldn't respond. I've never given my daughter any such medication. We don't even have any medication. At that moment, I remembered seeing my mother-in-law taking medicine in front of me. She had mentioned before that she suffered from insomnia. Following the doctor's instructions after hearing my account, I called my mother-in-law to the hospital. She came into the examination room, grumbling about being called. However, under the sharp questioning of the doctor, her expression changed. She became flustered and finally admitted to adding the medicine to my daughter's milk. She said she gave the medicine to our daughter hoping it would alleviate her nighttime crying, explaining, I just wanted to help. I saw how exhausted you and my son were from her crying. At those words from my mother-in-law, my heart turned cold as ice. Was that why my usually lively daughter had suddenly become so quiet? My chest tightened involuntarily. Then, the doctor's stern voice resonated in the room. How could you even think of doing such a thing? Even a small mistake in dosage could have made her never wake up again. There was disbelief and strong condemnation in the doctor's eyes. At his words, my mother-in-law's face turned pale. Crying and nighttime wailing is a sign of growth in children. Why would you do such a thing? The doctor's questioning echoed in the silent room. After this grave revelation, my mother-in-law was reported to the police. 
I just stared blankly as she was taken away. Later, when I explained the situation to my husband, he, too, seemed deeply shocked. Who could ever imagine that one's own mother would drug their grandchild? I could understand the betrayal he felt all too well. My mother-in-law was taken to the court and was ultimately fined for assault. The fact that she had no malice and showed remorse played into a lighter sentence. In the trial, she tearfully explained that she did it because she wanted to make things a bit easier for her son who had an important job. Nevertheless, afterwards, we decided to move and start a new life elsewhere. Living with my mother-in-law was no longer an option. Life in our new home was peaceful and happy. Our daughter's nighttime crying gradually subsided and we were living a relieved and peaceful life. We used to chip in a bit for household expenses when living with my mother-in-law, but now, without that expense, our finances eased. On the other hand, I heard that my mother-in-law's reputation suffered, and she became ostracized by her neighbors. The rumor of her drugging my daughter spread and because of that, she became isolated. Furthermore, living on her pension alone was becoming difficult. She had devoted many years to homemaking and didn't have special qualifications, so finding a job at her age wasn't easy. Still, she tried various part-time jobs and work opportunities. Her pride and sharp tongue created problems in her workplace relationships, and nothing seemed to work out. But now, she's settled into a cleaning job where she works quietly with minimal interaction with others. Our daughter now sleeps through the night, and peaceful days have returned for my husband and I. Raising a child is an unpredictable adventure. While prior knowledge and experience can be beneficial, there are many things you won't know until you experience them. Our parenting journey is still long. I'm sure we'll face various events and challenges ahead. But whenever something unexpected or troublesome happens, I'll remember this experience, stay calm, and seek the best solution. I still feel a heart-wrenching anxiety especially when I think of anything happening to my daughter. But each time, this kind of experience gives us strength. Our family plans to cherish the days ahead, and we will continue to pray for our daughter's healthy growth.